Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's video. It's Jamie Friday. As always on a Friday, we're having a detailed look at the weather paired with Japanese and CFSB tomorrow's. And this is going to pretty much cover the whole of uh, September. So we're going to go from today, 1st of September, of course, through uh, to pretty much the end of the month with the JMA and CFS models. Um, we'll deal with JMA first of all, and then we'll have a look, have a look at the uh, CFS uh, V2 as well. Just say uh, this evening, we're going to have um, more for September as uh, Terry Scully's month ahead forecast for September will be released here at the website. So uh, come back for that this evening. But let's get on with JMA Fro. We're going to start off with the 500 bit of our high denominators broken down into weekly peers from the pole uh, down. So um, this is the uh, North Pole uh, peer, of course, but I just change the colour, right, go to blue. This is the North Pole uh, just here, mid-latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere around there, and the British Isles uh, is just there. 500 millibars is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure, uh, being moved around by the jet stream uh, running above. Blue extrapolates to low pressure, and then bright colours, sort of yellows, oranges, reds, extrapolates to high pressure. Uh, do keep in, in mind, by the way, that uh, all of these um, longer range forecasts, anything beyond around five to seven days, is going to be impacted by uh, the developments of tropical storms and hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. Where those storms and hurricanes are going, always very uncertain and uh, was a job to uh, pin down. It does have knock-on effects for um, our weather. So uh, bear in mind, confidence is, well, confidence with any long-range forecast beyond five, seven days is always quite low, but confidence is particularly low at this time of the year. Nevertheless, for the week ahead, it's taking us from today, the 1st through to the 8th of September. We've got above average heights here, up to the uh, east and the northeast country, below average heights out around Greenland, and also to the southeast of the country, rather messy pattern, um, below average heights in east parts of America as well. So the upshot is that we're probably doing something uh, a little bit like that, with the jets, we're probably splitting the jets a bit, actually with some of the energy going down to south of us and some going up to the north. The overall idea is that it's probably quite a dryish and reasonably warm opening week to uh, September. Then we go through to uh, week two, taking us from the 8th through to the 15th of September. This one looks much more unsettled. So a big area of below average heights then setting up around and to the west of the country. Jet stream is going something a little bit like that, so we're on the cool side of the jet as well. For the second week of September, that looks very changeable and unsettled. You can expect showers or longer spells of rain, and quite coolish uh, temperatures as well. However, improvements end for weeks three and four. This takes us from the 15th through to the 29th of September, <coughs> excuse me, when we find that we've got above average heights building over and to the south of the country uh, with below average heights up to the north. So we're sending the jet stream up to the north like that. And then this is two weekly anomalies, so it could be a little bit transitional. It might still be quite unsettled for uh, week three, for example, and then maybe going into a much more settled pattern for week four. That's going towards the end of September, and uh, with high pressure building in towards the end of September, you can expect, particularly at night, quite cool conditions. Um, maybe mist and fog as well. We're getting into autumn by the time we get through to the end of September. So we have to keep that in mind. But nevertheless, it does look as though uh, we've got heights building from the south, potentially quite a uh, dry and uh, fairly warmish settle end to September. Keep in mind that the nights could be getting cold and misty at this time of year, of course. Right, have a look at the uh, temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights uh, next. So this is the tropics and the latitude view. We've got the equator uh, just there. The northern hemisphere on the northern side of the equator, of course, is there. And the southern hemisphere on the southern side of the equator is there. South pole is down here off the chart. North pole is up here uh, off the chart. That is America. That is um, sort of Asia and Russia. And this is British Charles over here. We've got Europe. Right, so everybody knows where everyone is. Be a reminder of the 500 bit of our height only for the first week, the, uh, the first week to the eighth of uh, September. We find that uh, we've got um, some above average heights up to our northeast 
and uh, down there as well and over there then there's low pressure down here and also there's low pressure over here low pressure over there as well very messy uh pattern for the coming week the upshot though is that the uh rainfall anomaly is a little bit above average to the west a bit drier than average um perhaps a bit surprisingly to the east although we have got an area of high pressure sat to our east so perhaps not that surprising that to east of parts country coming out dry and average temperature anomalies for the week ahead are generally on the uh, milder than average side so not too bad really for the first week of uh, september a good deal of dry and uh, fairly warm conditions for the uh, east a little bit more unsettled out to west now we go through to week two and this one looks much more unsettled we've got that big area of below average heights there over and to the west of the country bring jet stream through uh, like that as well so you expect this to be a wetter than average uh, week from the 8th to 15th of september that's what the model is showing above average rainfall coming through there Temperatures are taking a bit of a slide as well. They're still a little bit on mild and average side, but certainly it's also a little bit cooler there, I think, from uh, for week two compared to what we saw for week one. And then we go through to uh, week three and four, the 15th through 29th of September, when we have heights rising uh, to our south, below average heights up to the northwest, and it looks like we're pushing the jet stream out to the north and west of the country as well. So this one's taking the uh, rainfall up to the north. So uh, Scotland is still coming out a bit wet than average. England and Wales coming out drier than average. Temperature anomalies are on the milder than average side. So essentially the JMA is going for a milder than average September. I think we will get temperatures coming out above average uh, with that. Uh, precipitation is a little bit changeable, but uh, generally a fairly dryish month, I think, signalled for the south. Perhaps a little bit more unsettled uh, for the north and the west. Let's see what CFS V2 is showing. So again, these are 500 middle bar heights broken down into week periods. The first week period taking us from the 1st through the 7th of September. Below average heights uh, around into the southeast of the UK with this one. Basically above average heights up to our northeast and also out there as well so again very complicated with the pattern probably doing something uh, a little bit like that with the uh, jet stream that one looks rather more um unsettled and a little bit cooler as well i have to say for the week ahead compared to what the jma is showing and then we go through to uh week two which is the 8th to the 14th now the jma did have this as an unsettled week but it placed the uh, trough, the low pressure, to our west. The CFS is actually placing the trough over and to the east of the country with above average heights out to our west. So this is still unsettled, but the difference is that this is quite a lot cooler because we really are digging the jet stream southwards there. We are within that trough in the 500 mm bar flow, and um, we're on the cool side of the jet. So that does look significantly unsettled both of them are in agreement about that and settled week two for september but that one i think will be coming out with a uh, cooler than average temperature anomalies the uh, week three um 500 high drum looks like this from the 15th to 21st of september below average heights now to our north and above average heights down to the southwest uh, still bringing jet stream through a bit like that so that one looks changeable probably turning drier from this high pressure that we have down to our southwest particularly for southern parts of the country but overall still relatively changeable probably still relatively cool as well however by taking it through to week four which is the 22nd to the 8th of september a large area of above average heights is building over and to the northeast of the country which pushes the low pressure the jet stream away to the north so that's settling things down as we go through to the final full week of september now again bear in mind this is late september so uh whilst the days could be relatively warm and sunny by night we could well be having some quite cold nights maybe ground frost might even be ground frost tonight incidentally but so by the end of september under high pressure you can be thinking about ground frost and also mist and fog patches uh, as well so not as um warm perhaps as you will think by looking at the uh setup but nevertheless quite a settled end to september 
been seen by CFSB2 and the Chama is in agreement with that ring between the lines, I think. So the uh, temperature anomalies then, the uh, week one temperature anomaly is coming out cooler than average with the CFSB2. That's a little bit at odds with the JMA, which wants a fairly warmish week. Uh, coming up, and then we go through to week two, and this did look like a very cool week on the uh, height anomaly. Temperature anomalies are going very cool there as well. So quite a coolish first half to September with the CFS V2. Week three temperature anomalies are also coming out cooler than average. What about week four? That's as the high pressures building in, of course. So then we find the temperature anomalies recovering back to average. Uh, maybe a little bit warmer than average for Scotland. Keep in mind that could be impacted by some quite chilly nights. Overall, I think the CFS V2 is going for a cooler than average September, which is at odds with the JMA. The JMA is warmer than average September. CFS V2 is cooler than average. Uh, we have a look at the precipitation on this finally. So week one, coming out a bit wet and average for the far west of the country, otherwise near normal with the rainfall. Week two is coming out, perhaps not quite as wet as you would have thought, given the height anomaly. It's a bit wet and average for Scotland, otherwise again uh, near normal. I think that's quite a changeable week though, uh, if the height anomaly is right. Then we go through to week three. Um, average rainfall then, although perhaps seem to be a bit dry on average to the southwest. And by the time you get through to week four, this is normally a fairly weak signal by week four. But actually, we've got a strong signal here for a drier than average week from the 22nd to the 28th of September. So it's all a bit of a mixed bag. A lot of changeable weather coming up if we uh, believe these uh, long-range models. It's not going to be entirely... Uh, settled and straightforward as you often get in September. It is one of our drier and more high pressure dominated months on average through the year. If these uh, models are right, very least we're looking at changeable conditions uh, with weather alternating on a week by week basis. So a fairly, and they are at odds with the temperature as well. That's quite striking because the JMA is uh, warmer than average with the temperatures for September. CFS V2 is cooler than average with the temperatures for September. So there's a split there. The overall pattern does look change, but they're both in agreement, I think, on uh, particularly unsettled conditions through the second week of September, uh, differing slightly in the placement of the trough of low pressure, but they both have it close to the country. So the first half of September, after not too bad a beginning, probably deteriorates, turns more unsettled. And then they seem to be both in agreement as we go later into the, um, into the second half of September, September, we probably get a recovery in pressure. So we could end September on quite a dry note, uh, which could be fairly pleasantly warm by day, possibly quite cold at night. So that's how it's shaping up for days, Jamie. If I remember, at this time of the year, we are really impacted by what's happening in the tropical Atlantic in terms of tropical storms and hurricane development. Where those storms and hurricanes go will always have a big impact on the overall weather scenario in the Northern Hemisphere uh, have knock-on impacts. So always very, very uncertain time of year, this late August and through September. Most difficult time of year to forecast, really, in many ways. So take it with a pinch of salt. That's how it's shaping up with Jamie Friday. This week could look different next week. Uh, later on today, I say Tony Scott will release his September month head forecast. The Gaz Weathervid's month head forecast September will be issued um, sometime tomorrow. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.